let's look at a graphical representation of our formula here. So this one just writes this back in here, just so that we have it in front of us, fs, and then xa, f minus k, fs, and so that's k equals minus infinity to plus infinity. So what does it mean in terms of graphical representation? So imagine our xa looks, so let's draw this properly here, so that's our xa of f, so that's f here, and the spectrum of our xa looks like this, so that's our spectrum in the analog domain. So here we've got fs half, and here we've got minus fs half. So how does the sample spectrum looks like? So this one here. Obviously we're getting normalized frequencies, but if we just ignore this here and say this is our our sample spectrum here, and then we have here fs half, and this is here minus fs half. So we've got the spectrum here again, essentially for k equals zero. But now we have we have copies of the spectrum here. It's at um, distance uh, at the fs here, and so therefore we have the same the same spectrum here, and we've got the same spectrum here and so on, and so on. So this means we are getting an infinite number of um, copies of these spectra here, which obviously doesn't matter as long, as long as they are band-limited in this region here. So we need to talk about this a bit more. So let's look now at um, problems arising from this, or ambiguity. So we know that sampling introduces ambiguities, and that's the reason why we said, for example, that the f max in a signal should be always lower than f s half. So do we see this also in our plot now here? And so have a look here. This is our f s half. This is minus f s half, and so imagine this is our our signal here. That's our spectrum spectrum of xa. So it's our analog spectrum here. And then we now add fs. It shows up again. And again on the other side here. Yeah, so we have got this also here. And we've got the spectrum also here. So now imagine, so what is what is happening if the spectrum is now wider? So we've got the same here, but the spectrum goes like this. And obviously, the copy of the spectrum here will reach into this region here and create an overlap. Yeah. So in the sample domain, we are obviously limited to this region here. So this corresponds to f minus 0.5 normalized frequency and this is here f plus 0.5. So the so the poor sample system is only seeing this here. So even if there may be high, um, even if there have been maybe higher frequencies in there. So the so our sample system when it's looking looking at the frequency component here, it could have also arisen here and the sample system does not know which one is the right one. So and therefore we see that in order to avoid ambiguity here that we need to use this law here to so our Nyquist frequency here fs half to prevent ambiguities here. So this is still true for that. But um, can we also generalize this? So is there a general rule, more general rule for this here? And um, Yes, there is. Now let's have a look at a very curious case here. 
So again, we've got our FS half, our Nyquist frequency. This is here FS, um, and this is here minus FS half. And so now, before I had the spectrum always sitting here, but I could also put my my analog spectrum here. Yeah, so if I if I just define my XA here in this region. So what would happen then? So we know that an analog spectrum would automatically generate copies here and um, here and here. And so this means that this, if we are having an analog spectrum here, this will show up here, but it would be still workable because there's no overlap. Yeah. So even so, imagine our analog spectrum is here, is really placed here. It would generate a copy here, but there's no ambiguity. So this means it's perfectly all right if we have our analog spectrum here, because it will fold down to this spectrum here. Yeah, so this one is, this is here called fold down. So with that, we need to change our, our Nyquist theorem a bit. Um, and so before this we had f max had to be lower than half of the sampling rate. So obviously in this case this doesn't make sense because f max would would mean here and not here, and so and therefore the generalized case is that the bandwidth needs to be lower than f s half. Yeah. So so this means the bandwidth of our of our signal here this is relevant and it's not the maximum frequency. So this is a generalized formula to avoid ambiguity but it creates fold down, but all the information can be recovered. So let's just summarize our um, findings here. So initially our sampling theorem was that f max or the maximum frequency in the spectrum of a signal needs to be lower or equals to half of the sampling rate. Yeah, so this was the sampling rate. Sampling rate and maximum frequency in the signal. However, now we know that this is too strict here. That is actually the bandwidth of the signal which needs to be below half fs yeah so that's the bandwidth 